What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of the Papaholics podcast. Today's date is April 4th, 2020. I am one of your hosts here, Franklin F.M. McKinnis. And of course, I have, as always, my co-host here with me. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Collecting Plastic. And uh, yeah, we know it's been a while. We, we kind of kept you all waiting. But while the world is at a standstill, I think this is a great time for us to do another one of these podcasts. And um you know, since since it has been a while, of course, we do want to catch up with you all just a little bit. I, I've been pretty busy on my channel, so I think if you watch my channel on a regular basis, you kind of get a feel for what's been going on with me. Um, Collecting Plastic, I definitely want you to, um, you know, share with the people what's been up your way. Okay, so <laughs> I've been gone for a while. I think I've only put out one little six-minute video in the last, like, two months. But, you know, when this whole thing started... With me, my work, I work outdoors and I run a business, so I just got swamped, right? Um, it was just more work from home. Got very busy, so that's why I have not been making a lot of videos. Yeah, and li life always comes first. You know, um, I I've been able to be very consistent since I started YouTube, but maybe that's actually to a fault at times. I think there have been some times maybe where I should have stepped back instead of you know, going through the sleep deprivation and all that type of stuff or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely uh, life has to come first when it comes down to it. And it's just finding, you know, the motivation as well. Like, when this all kind of happened, I, I just couldn't get motivated to talk about Funko Pops, to be honest. But, you know, yeah, you, you I'm, gave I'm, me a call, and this, this, this I do want to do. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of struggle with that, too, because there are times when it's like, I, you know, it feels wrong to think about Pops. Like, I hate to even, like, get on this, but let me just touch on this for a moment. Like, when Kobe Bryant passed away and some people's minds instantly went to his Pops, I'm like, really? Like, th that's not the time for it. You know, there are times when it's just like, you know, Pops should not be at the forefront of your mind. At the same time, though, you know, there are situations where people just need distractions. You know, like, you can't, yeah. you can't be buried in the news because that's pretty depressing so yeah we, we just need a breather you know sometimes and um i definitely have been going hard with collecting given the, the current situation because that that is one of my major distractions basically oh but, and i've been trying to practice some discipline because yeah of course i love collecting and mm -hmm. i love buying stuff online but i've been trying really really hard to be disciplined yeah, on online is tough. I mean, because it's like multiple stores right there at your fingertips. So, yeah. you know, trying and not great to deals shop. Yeah. And free shipping. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, honestly, yeah, the deals have been kind of insane. And I guess that is based around the current situation because, you know, there's not the foot traffic and whatnot. And um, even for businesses that are just online anyway, you know, they're still taking advantage of the situation. Can't really fault them for that, that, you know, people are stuck at home. People want something to do and people want to shop, you know, so... Yeah, well, like some of the my deals are crazy. Account, my UBA account has been pretty active, you know, like so I've had a lot of time to, besides work, you know, to organize my pop room a little bit, take out some of my old collectibles. And some of them I'm like, look, I haven't taken out this collectible in eight years. Do I really need it? I see that it's worth some money now. I'm not that big into this anymore. I've been putting it on eBay. It sat there for a while and like, since when when this shutdown really started happening over here in California, I started selling a bunch of stuff on eBay, and I see a lot of California addresses um, for when I'm sending them out. So definitely, the shopping online has been ramping up for sure. Did you um, share on your channel? You had a situation on eBay somewhat recently, didn't you? With um, I can't remember what pop it was. Oh no, no, it was me and you. I think we were talking about which one did I get? I got the. I was able to find the all-star Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Okay. About fifty-eight dollars, which is a lot, and you know, that's about as much as I'll pay for a pop. And I've only done that maybe ten times, maybe at the most, right? Which is still a lot. But um, you know, and considering that just to get that one at retail was like thirty-five, you know, what was it, like thirty-five, forty bucks or something? Yeah. To me, yeah. the markup wasn't that much. I'm like, look, I'm not gonna sit there day and night on that upper decks website to try to save twenty bucks. I'm too busy for that, right? But I really wanted this pop. But of course, yeah, it came completely uh not mint how the guy promised and really, really poor packaging, but not mint. Guy was giving me trouble about like just basically saying that he was sending it mint, blah 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 but 
you know, I sell on eBay. I'm like, look, dude, just, you know, just give me my money back. I'll send you your pot back. And that's, <laughs> that, that's it. I mean, he eventually did it. It's a hassle. Um, but eventually eBay steps in, so it's pretty safe. Yeah. Yeah, and I know people have their different opinions on Macari, but um, I, I've had only good experiences with it. I think the only situations I've had with Macari were people. I don't know why sometimes people will list and then they they don't ship, like they renege on the deal or whatever, and then you see the listing again, and it's like, what are you doing? Like, why are you wasting people's times if you if you're not going to actually ship the item out? But I mean, it's not it's not like they're taking your money or anything because, you know, your money is protected. But it's just it really is weird because I almost got a um a Joker bus from a seller on there, which I did end up getting it. I ended up getting it on eBay, though. But it was listed on Macari and the guy never shipped it. So I put in for the, um you know, to get the refund or whatever, which I got after the couple of days. I think it's like three days you wait or whatever. And um yeah, but it's, it's weird that I see the listing up still. <laughs> Could it be that? Because I, what I've noticed on eBay, because I like to read people's feedback, because I want to see how they're shipping these pops. Like that's the most important thing you can read on eBay is negative feedback on pop sellers. Like, look at what they're doing to piss people off, mm-hmm. and it's very telling what kind of seller he is, right? What I've noticed a lot on people's things is people go, "Oh, I bought the item and guy canceled. He and sent me a refund, but just canceled out of the blue." They relist it at whatever higher prices. Like say, say somebody had the Kobe Bryant, for example, for sale for like I don't know, thirty bucks, and he's had it there for several months. Kind of forgot about it. Kobe Bryant passes away. He immediately sells his pop because it's probably the cheapest one on eBay. He goes, oh, he goes and looks. He goes, oh crap, the Kobe Bryant's worth a hundred bucks now. So uh, he refunds the. Person. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So he refunds the person, relists it. Super annoying, but. Basically, pretty, I guess, legal or whatever you want to call it um, with eBay yeah. because, in, I mean, I ha- I don't have an experience refunding or like uh, people a lot, so I don't know if there's like a limit, like if you start doing it too much, if it causes a red flag or not. But I know that is common on eBay, so I imagine it's common anywhere that people sell pops. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this though. Um, one thing I really like about Funko is, and now you will see some disparities sometimes, but for the most part. There's consistency with, um, you know, what the values are considered to be with a lot of other collectibles. You could tell people have no idea what to do when it oh, comes no. to reselling. There are just values all over the place. Like, for example, with the um, the cryptozoic bombshell statues, you'll see one person listed for almost what they paid for retail. Somebody else will have that same one listed like 200 bucks. Like they just have no idea what to do with some of these other collectibles. I guess it's because. I, I don't know. I guess they don't have like um Well, there's less tools available, right? There's no yeah, pop exactly. price guide. That's what I was about to there's say. No, like pop price guide, tons of sales. Apps. Yeah. 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 So it, it's I guess it's tougher to judge the market with these other collectibles, but that's definitely a plus with Funko. Even if you don't like some of the prices you're seeing, at least the values can be somewhat agreed upon. Yeah, it's a little bit more consistent. It's actually a little bit more like an actual stock market, the Funko Pops. Like so like I have a bunch of um WWE elites, right? Um by Mattel. Some of those, um, th- those are actually surprisingly go up in value quite a bit. I have some that are worth almost 200 bucks, right? And, but just like what you were saying, a lot of people don't know what they have with those. I'll see some go on sale 30 bucks, and I'll look at that, and I almost want to be like, God, I should buy that because I know that if I buy it and put it for sale tomorrow for 150 bucks. It'll sell. And the only reason nobody's bought this one yet is because they spelt the name wrong. <laughs> and I just happened mm. to make the same typo. Like, I think it was like a Liv Morgan. Um, and they put the R and the O, like, wrong on Morgan. It was, like, backwards. So, like, nobody's ever going to find it. And I just happened to make that same mistake. And it happened to pop up. And it was, like, really cheap. And I was like, what the hell? And and it's just little things like that where people are ignorant. You'll never find that with Pops. Like, people are too savvy on Pops. Yeah. But um, I know in, in terms of Funko right now, of course, you know, with, with everything going on in the world, there's not a whole lot really going on. I mean, as far as like recent releases, I'm trying to think of what's been. I know there actually have been some recent releases, but um, like the Gamerverse, Avengers, uh, the, some of those pops are just ugly. <laughs> like just to be, they look just to a be little real. unfinished. Yeah, the, I, I do like um. I, now I did actually order a couple. Like I got the um Kamala Khan on the way because I am a fan of Miss Marvel. I really like that character, and I think hers looks pretty good. It's not too far away from the comic book version, 
some of the other ones, I it's like they're trying to go for this futuristic look. Like the Captain America is just hideous to me. Yeah, I don't like that. I, I don't like that I, one. I don't, yeah. I'm not a big fan on game pops to begin with, unless they're kind of like more old school. I just don't like the Avengers looking so, like so tactical, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like, um, uh, yeah. I think that's what they're going for. This whole futuristic type thing, because this story does take place further into the um, future. So, but still, that that Captain America is horrible. Now, the Iron Man. I do want the um the Target exclusive variant of that Iron Man. I don't want the um you know the common, but mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. There's not too much there. I like that. Even the Taskmaster is just the Taskmaster awkward. looks unfinished. It looks unfinished. It, to me. It, like there's just something missing about it. You know what? Well, to me, what it looks like, it looks like Joe Schmo playing, you know, doing cosplay of Taskmaster. <laughs> it does not look like a like the um the movie Taskmaster, you know, based off of Black Widow. I got um two of those pops. Those look he like looks like a lethal character. Yeah, that that Taskmaster based on the game though, like I said, it just looks like a guy <laughs> dressed like Taskmaster. <laughs> More like ta- uh, Task Larper. <laughs> yeah, and, and the face mask reminds me more of uh, Casey Jones from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles than Taskmaster. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. Yeah, I, I think I ended up ordering it too, though, just because um, Hot Topic had their like three, four, twenty-seven, whatever it is, and I was like, I, I might as well get it. But um, yeah, I'm not not too enthused about it though, now, to be honest. A couple of pops that came out that I did really like and I think look better in person are the um, Contra pops. Those two in person together yeah. look really, really good. Yeah, I do like those. Now, the only reason um, I haven't gotten them yet is because I'm kind of wondering if they're going to end up doing a two-pack of them, which I would really like. Normally, two commas and a two-pack, I could care less. But, you know, with those, I think that would be dope. So I'm kind of waiting to see if that's going to happen. I, I think that that might happen, right? Or even like a um, a two-pack, I, I don't know, maybe with different colors from different games. Or like you, I can see them doing a repaint. Um, or these two commons will probably end up being on sale at one point, and you'll be able to get them for like five bucks each. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they're moving very much. Yeah. But prop, props to Funko though for actually, um, I forgot which one it is, but I know one of them like has a cigar in the mouth and yeah, yeah, I, I like that. You know, they keep it keep it accurate. You know, you know, some people are so sensitive uh, about stuff like that now. The Dutch character. <laughs> yeah, which is so funny when you go back and you look at the original Contra cover and you're like, wow, like they really did just rip off like Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like it's totally them. It it is, and it also you know it also kind of looks like, um, Sunny from Predator too. The second player, kind of reminds oh. me of that. Yeah, but um, he has the the more like the Rambo um, bandana the or yeah. whatever going on. Yeah, I, I, th- I think Sunny had one too. But yeah, no, I know, yeah. I know it's definitely it's definitely it's just alone. it's just total like eight eighties cheese basically. That's what it's going for. And the um. other pops I got that actually in pictures didn't really blow me away and then I only got them because I like the band but in person especially carry the Slayer Pops in mm. person they look awesome dude yeah um, well you know that's not really so much my thing but I, I do like the, I, I'm really well, I want to know what you think about this when it comes to these um, rock bands especially do you feel like Funko should go ahead and put them out like in a three pack or a four pack or whatever? Or do you think it's good to stick to the individual? I think I like individual because mm-hmm. you st- when you start to get into too many awkward sizes, it just makes it really, really hard to display. And if you're going to take them out of the box, it doesn't matter if they're in a three pack. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess I just wonder about that because, like, for example, with Queen. Um, I think we, you know, people love Queen. We all love Queen, but honestly, you know, a lot of people are just gonna buy the Freddie Mercury pops. I only have other Freddie. ones. <laughs> yeah. Are, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So that's why I kind of wonder if they should have that option. And there are some stores that are willing to sell, you know, the odd size, uh, two packs, three packs, whatever. Like you know, um, Barnes and Noble has the BTS seven pack. Not oh, only do they yeah. have the, um, they got the seven that. pack, and then they also have the seven pack of their, um, like mascot type characters or whatever mm-hmm. you know yeah, i and, saw those too 
Yeah, so I don't know. It's just something I was kind of wondering about. That it should is kind be of impressive. Like, jump. I think if there was, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a band that I really like. Like, I don't know. Uh, I used well, to I like Edward a, Sharp a, his... a lot. Oh. And, but, like, 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 if, like, I don't like BTS, so to me, I'm just like, eh. But I'm, th- I'm trying to think of, like, if there was a band that I really like that has, like, a ton of members like that, that has, like, eight members. Mm-hmm. Edward Sharp and the Mangex Zeros did. And I think if they would make a big ass thing of them, I would want it. I think it's just subjective. I think it just depends on whether you like the band or not. But I think um, when they first showed the um, the new Kiss Pops, I was like, ah, they would look so dope in a four pack. <laughs> like they would look really cool, you know, all together like that. But yeah, I, I do but get the is, um, shelf space. It's a big being expense, issue. man. Like yeah. it's a bit. You gotta be really into Kiss to be like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the trigger and spend however what sixty bucks or however many, you know, bucks that four pack is gonna be. It's, it starts to be a lot of money, right? Yeah. And also, you got to think know. about it too, like history of collecting, right? Like, say, like you, like the example of Freddie Mercury and the rest of Queen. The one that's going to be the most valuable might not be Freddie Mercury in the end, because Freddie Mercury yeah, is going to be true. the one that's obviously the most produced, right? It's going to be one of the other band members, probably the least popular one, because it's going to be the least available one, right? And in the end, like maybe five years from now, that's going to be the one that's the most expensive. That actually you know? just happened with the band, um, and I'll. See if I could find it, but I know there's a band where one of the members, not the lead singer, that their that the value of one of the members like just jumped out of nowhere. Um, I wish I could familiar. remember off the top of my head who it was, but yeah, I, I think you're right about that though. That you know some of the members that don't seem the most popular, if they're under, if the pop is underproduced, then yeah, it's going to come down to that. Or, as far or as the I haven't concerned. checked. Yeah, or I haven't checked in a while. Um, but the last time I did check, the Scooby Doo pops for like it's a good example. Wilma or no Velma that's her name Velma is it no no is that Velma the one with the glasses from Scooby Doo why am I having a brain for it uh, but yeah um, yeah that's yeah, yeah Velma Velma. Mm-hmm. Velma was the most oh, yeah. uh, expensive one yeah, and Velma yeah, is definitely far. not the most popular character you know what I mean well no well actually she is kinda in a yeah. way because there's that whole um who's the, the blonde who was the what's the blonde's name uh Daphne, Daphne? the red yeah, you Daphne know, there's the whole thing about the Daphne or Velma, basically, and a lot of people say Velma, like, so she's grown in popularity, and there's, like, a lot of women that will actually dress up for, as her now for, like, Halloween and stuff, so, yeah, I her popularity see, has see, jumped up. I can see nowadays with today's sensibilities, uh, internet culture, um, people identifying with Velma more than Daphne, yeah. for sure. Now, um, I don't know much about um, Motley Crue, so you can kind of tell me. If these prices sound right here, the values. So Mick Mars, um, this is on the Funko ad. Mick Mars, $21. Tommy Lee, $20. Vince Neal, $21. Nikki Six, $55. That sounds right. Because, like, I was going to say, Nikki Six would probably be the one that goes up in price. Because some of the other ones are, like, you know, clownish. Like, Tommy Lee, like, his antics overshadow his music. Right, uh-huh. and I think Nikki Six has always just kind of been like one of the band members, kind of one of the cooler ones, I guess. I could be. I'm not a big Motley Crue fan, so. Yeah. But I, I that that kind of makes sense to me. Okay, I was I was wondering about that because I really didn't know, and I think I saw somebody like doing an unboxing, and they got um, Nikki Six, and were you know surprised by that value. Yeah. But um, as far as like other releases, I did get the um, I, I shared like you know pretty much anything I get I share. So I, I've already shared like we we both already shared you know our Emerald City Comic Con stuff. Um, I got the Devastator, um, you know as part of that uh, Dark Knights Metal series, which I'm I'm really enjoying collecting those. I think those are pretty pretty cool. Still, um, it's, it does throw me off a little bit that they made the Grim Knight pop and they gave him just blade weapons instead of guns. So I'm still hoping for a statue of the Grim Knight to come out at some point um, yeah, in the I near don't future. Understand, I don't understand what happened with there because obviously Funko doesn't have a problem giving pops guns. No. And it's DC's character and they gave him guns. Like, I don't I don't understand what... I don't. I don't know what happened either. Maybe, maybe there will be another version of him at some point because, I mean, he does use blade weapons too but really his appeal is that it's just crazy to see batman with tons of guns on him you know looking like the punisher basically so and, and i kind of feel like yeah like that's his appeal and but i kind of feel like that's why he doesn't have guns because it's batman it just seems like um something that if you're not going to do it right don't do it at all it might it might come down to a licensing thing because I, I guess it's the difference between 
him doing that in a comic book that's, you know, going to be mostly read by adults as to him being on a shelf, you know, for the public to see. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe that's right. what it is. Who knows? Who knows? Because I mean, they got, I, I'm they got sure, Laura Palmer on the shelf, man. But I'm sure they are very protective of Batman's image at times, you know, because, you know, especially when there is any negative feedback. You, you know, I don't know if you remember that fiasco or not with Batman. I think it was the Batman damned comic the one where there's like full frontal nudity of bruce wayne and there's that backlash on it and they uh, immediately oh, yeah. reprint they reprinted it with changes immediately so because they're, they're they're protective of that character which yeah, is understandable guess, because he's worth batman billions. can't have any uh, i guess batman can't have a, a bat penis i guess yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's it's ridiculous but yeah they got they got to protect him because he is one of the most popular characters in the world so who who knows but um yeah no it makes sense i could see that easily being some boardroom decision going like i don't care no no guns on batman you know we got a new movie coming out and no guns on batman now um with you i think when it comes to funko you pretty much only care about the pops right you never really been into any of the other products uh some of the dorbs I liked, but it was mostly because of the characters. Like, it was like the Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman. Um, I got some of the rock candies. I liked those, but then Funko screwed that up. Um, and yeah, pretty much that, that was pops. the rock candy was one of the, I still feel like that's one of the better um, products that they've had that's non pops. It was a good line. Well, yeah, but they did ruin it. Like, for one thing, okay, it felt like it was created to really push, um, you know, powerful female characters. And then they came out, they started doing males, and it's like, what? Like, it, it feels like it lost focus very quickly, and yeah, it just, and then um, you you made a good point, too, um, about the packaging, the change in the packaging as well, because they went from being seated right next to Pops to, like, being on those hanging tabs, mm -hmm. you know, away from the Pops, and I think that does affect, you know, the, the sale, so yeah, I definitely agree with you um, on that. But yeah, it's a shame what happened there. But lately, I have been getting into the sodas. Initially, I thought they were awkward, but um, they're kind of cool, you know, because they do have that retro feel to them. Um, and then you look at it too; it's like almost like a double collectible because the can itself is pretty cool, you know. And the figure, you know, you get the figure, you get the chance at a chase, which is definitely pushing the sales on those, you know. Um, and the pog, you know, the pog. Some people are into those too. That comes along with it, but. Yeah, the sodas have really grown on me just just for that retro feel. Yeah, I'm not too big on them. Maybe, maybe they gotta make um, some different characters before I get into them. It's because to me, it's just like it always feels like Funko chooses the same dozen characters to yeah. launch every single line, and I'm just yeah, like, eh. it's, it's yeah, yeah they they play it pretty safe. They they do play it pretty safe. I can agree with that. Um, I'll, I'll say though, I'll give them, I'll give them a little bit of credit. They did do some characters that I did not expect. Like, um, what's that rat? That rabbit's character name? Or yeah, that's Crusader the only rabbit. one. I like. Yeah, that's the only one that I would actually go. Ah, I could see that one putting it somewhere. I don't need it. If someone gave mm -hmm. it to me, I'd keep it. I like it. All the other ones, eh. Yeah, well, Crusader rabbit is pretty cool. I tell you what, though, um, flippers are out of their minds. Like we already know in general, they can be out of their minds, but. You when the sodas first launched and the chases started coming out there, people were like trying to sell these chases for like 150, 200. Yeah, I was it's like, at that. <laughs> it's I was like, like what? <laughs> what? What? I think what they're doing is like, um, you know, trying to establish this this market price for them or whatever. And it's like, no, no, that's that's not gonna work. Those prices well, are gonna have to come down. I was questioning my own judgment because I, I thought I thought the soda things. I was like, ah, that's gonna be like, ah, that's gonna be a flop. And then I saw yeah, some they, of those prices, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm wrong. Well, there, there are, are times when I think um, flippers can kind of set a standard. Like um, with ad icons, they definitely did that because I remember Tony the Tiger dropped, and people, you know, immediately are trying to flip it for like 200. And every, you know, all, all of a sudden, everybody started listing it like that way. And now, you know, to this day, a lot of ad icons are, then they can be pricey. It's coming down some, though, because they're putting, you know, Funko's putting out more common ad icons but still if there's a tough to get one like that metallic toucan sam then oh yeah you're gonna pay through the nose for that oh, um yeah. I, I, that was not a pun intended with toucan sam but hey it works <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even pick it up <laughs> but but yeah like that that's it would add icons they did that but i don't think they're gonna do be able to do that with these um soda ones you know but i'm, well, I'm into those speaking about ebay prices on man 
I always wanted a Maggie from The Walking Dead. And of course, since I've been shut in and I'm a sick person, I'm watching stuff like Contagion and rewatching The Walking Dead. And, you know, because <laughs> I'm mm. crazy. But mm. I looked up Maggie, Walking Dead, dude. I got her for like 20 bucks. And it came in in a pot protector. Perfect condition. And I think the shipping was like five. So all in all, about 25 bucks for Maggie. I was like, you know what, dude, that is a great price. I don't know if it's because, you know, Walking Dead has dropped off a little bit or people are a little bit worried about the economy and they're just selling stuff off no matter what it was. Um, I'm noticing a lot of prices going down for um, stuff that was considered grails before. Yeah, I remember Maggie being up over, over 70 bucks at like the height of her popularity on the series. And I do think it is partially because the series has gone down. As a matter of fact, I just saw a clip of... Um, I don't know if it's the season finale or series finale or what's going on. I don't I don't even know what's going on with The Walking Dead these days. But I saw a clip from an upcoming episode and I was like, wow, this is terrible. Like, it was <laughs> so bad. Like, for one thing, there was nobody in the scene that, you know, started off from the series. I mean, it was like completely, you know, recent characters. So there were a couple of people in the scene. I had no idea who they were. But they were introducing a new character and she was just so over the top, like it felt like she was in the wrong series like she just appeared yeah. in the wrong series yeah it it's bad like i'm i'm really glad that i <laughs> went ahead and got out of it when i did but I, I i actually debated on whether or not to keep my walking dead pops but i decided to go and hang on to them you know because i still do have good memories of some you know from the earlier seasons still like some of those characters the way they were early on so yeah i'm going to go ahead and keep what i do have of the walking dead yeah, like, I, I went through a phase, too, where I thought about selling my Walking Dead pops, and I'm really glad I didn't, because, so I'm always, like, a season behind on The Walking Dead, because I don't have cable, I just stream everything, so I watch it on Netflix, always a season behind, right? Um, so that's why I kind of just started rewatching it, because I think the first, like, three, four seasons of The Walking Dead are just so, so good, like, I, I just think they're great, um, and I think if I would have sold them, and then being shut in like this and going to watch Walking Dead, I really, really would have regretted selling those for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely good to go back and um, take a look sometimes. It's like certain series I have to go back and watch them and just know when to stop. Like, I know that point where where it suddenly goes downhill. I'm like, okay, this this will be my finale, you know, and then I'm done. I can't. I have to stick with it. I have to know how it ends. It can, it can just totally devolve into total nonsense garbage i just i still need to see how it ends not me like with the office like i know when michael leaves i'm leaving like you know like i'm i'm good um and how you know uh how you uh how i met your mother i actually watched that whole series except for the last season and i i, I just had a bad yeah. feeling about where it was headed and i'm so glad i bailed because when i saw like how you know, there was like stories and videos on YouTube about how the finale turned out. I would have been livid. Like I would have been yeah. so upset if I watched that last season. So I'm actually glad I went ahead and bailed on it. See, I guess I'm just different. I would have to like, I would want to have seen it before I heard the opinions. Right. And then just to, I, I, I don't know. I, it's weird, but I do kind of find it fun when, um, even even if something's horrible, like it's even more fun too. Like something that you've expected it to be good, you go and watch it, and it's garbage. Mm. It's kind of fun to go then later on, you know, listen to everybody rip it to shreds. Mm. Oh, but um, uh, getting back to funk, I know we totally jumped the topic there, but uh, I've also been into the uh, Paka Paka lately just because it's it's different. I mean, they're basically mystery minis. But the way that they're presented and everything, it just it just feels like something fresh. And I like still have love. Like upon, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I still have some love for, like, you know, actual mystery minis. But the way Funko has been doing them lately has been a little bit annoying with the way too many one and sixes. Um, it just, like, because I'm, I'm at a point where, like, I'm willing to actually buy a whole case of mystery minis if it's something I'm really into. But it, it just sucks when you know that you're going to end up with at least three doubles from the jump because of these one and six ratios, you know, so. Yeah, one yeah. and six is a little small. I want to say, mm. I think Kid Robot one in 12 was their uh, most common. Um, when you got a case of like 20 or 24, mm. you might get some that were one in 12. And that was it. So you might get a double in a case and wasn't so bad because a lot of times you can go like halfers with a friend and get a case yeah. and you know that you're not going to get three of the same one but 
one and six, dude, is yeah, one and six when there's only when there's only twelve boxes. That's just yeah, I, it's annoying. That is really annoying. So that that's why I like pocket pocket. Like I say, and it's it makes something you different. never want to and... buy one if you don't see a fresh box. Like if I see a box yeah. that has like not twelve of them in it, I'm like I don't even. I was like no, because people know the layouts. I'm like no, it's gonna be all the one and sixes. You just know it yeah. is. Yeah. Things have changed though. Like they they actually do like do different layouts now. But I I kind of miss the days of the mystery minis when people would share the layouts and like. I could go like I remember I went and got um Red Hood because I knew exactly where he was gonna be, <laughs> you know, at what retailer. Nice so <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that and it was a community thing too, like the community helping each other out. I mean, I don't, I don't that, blame people but, um, for doing it. I'm just saying yeah. that later on when you go in there and you see like for Funko as a company and like say Hot Topic for example as a company, it's not a good business model where you just know that after you sell two products out of a case of twelve. A lot of people are going to like have an aversion to it, yeah, knowing that yeah. the good ones are probably gone. Yeah, so I, I know they had to switch it up because it's yeah, because like you said, it's bad business pretty much. But it was fun while it lasted. But yeah, All as right. far as uh, Funko, I mean, I I know that um, there's not not too much they really can do right now. Not not a well, lot of major releases. Those, but uh, what about those Pride Pops? Um. Those people keep asking me like what I think about those. For one thing, like when I saw um when they were first listed, I think they were just listed as Rainbow and then you know the characters. So I, I knew the Batman, I knew something else was going on because they weren't initially listed as Pride Pops. You know, I saw the list floating around and that they were on the way. So I kind of figured that they must be Pride Pops and this would be different from the original Rainbow Batman, which that one was based off of a, a, one of those old awkward comics or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But um, so I, I kind of guessed they were gonna be for Gay Pride right away because mm -hmm. of the Batman. I was like, well, they've already made a Rainbow Batman, so this has got to be like a Pride. It's got to be Pride. But you know what though? I really feel like um, now not with the Batman, uh, not with the Rainbow Pop, but with the Rainbow um, Dorbs that they did of Batman. I mm -hmm. kind of feel like without saying it directly that they intended that for Gay Pride as well because they actually released that. Um, it came out a couple months after uh, there was that shooting at a gay club in Florida and like there had been some other negative things, you know, um, that had happened in the press. So I feel like Funko has been, you know, very supportive of that community for a long time. And, you know, as far as these new Pride Pops, for one thing, I think the paint jobs do look really cool. You know, I do like the way they did the paint jobs. Not so I'm not so sure about the uh character choices. I think the Batman does look cool. Um the SpongeBob looks a little awkward to me. It's just that I don't know. It's it's kind of odd because he's holding a well, rainbow like, but then like, they have the rainbow yeah, colors across. <laughs> so it's it's like wearing it's, a striped tie and a striped shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, exactly. It's just the, the paint job is awkward. I don't really have so much an issue with them choosing him as a character, but that particular design, like, I get it. You know, he's holding a rainbow. Maybe they could have did his body with that paint job, but then the rainbow, keep it as the actual rainbow. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think what I kind of like about it is that it's a rainbow on a rainbow, and it's SpongeBob. Like, it's just, it's silly, right? I kind of yeah. like that about it, and I do like that they picked SpongeBob and Hello Kitty, um, those yeah, Hello me. Kitty definitely. I'm glad it's um, not. I'm, yeah, I'm glad it's not Batman, uh, uh, Iron Man, and then I don't know some other. You know, uh, uh, Huckleberry Hound. You know, no, like they were they were smart about it. It, yeah. it appeals to a lot of different tastes. They they were very smart about it. So, um, yeah, I think it's a good look, especially because it is promoting the It Gets Better project and anything that is about um, suicide prevention. Because I mean, that's kind of you know what this project relates to. Because it's very tough for young people coming out. There's a lot of ridicule. Sometimes people get disowned from their families and stuff like that. So well, yeah, and, it's and, awful. I mean, I mean, people yeah, get so, picked on for having a big nose. Could you imagine, you know, have, having to go through middle school, um, people picking on you for being gay? It's awful. Yeah, yeah, and it especially hurts when your family is, you know, the the critics, you know, the main critics. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, you, you I get think, it at school, um, you get it at home. It's awful. Like I said, anything Funko's doing for a good cause, I'm down with that. And and that's something I like about Funko that I think a lot of people don't give them credit for because they got this going on not that long ago. They did the um, you know, the firefighters that are helping out um with the, the bushfires in Australia. They had that pop available through Pop Culture's website. Um, you know, and that oh, you raised can tell money they for that put cause. Some work into that too. It wasn't just like an afterthought that, oh, let's just come up with something real quick. The pop 
turned no, out really it's nice. A, it's a actually, it's well, actually I mean, I haven't seen it in like, person, but the, 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 yeah. the concept of it is nice. That, yeah, that's what got me. Like, before I even read what it's all about, just looking at his pop, I was like, that is a dope pop. Like, it's really well designed. Now, it's kind of hard breaking at the same time because obviously you know koala being hurt and i actually saw some footage that i wish i had not seen of you know the animals actually yeah, being it's, injured it's, it's really rough to see but I, I i really like when they do things for a um a good cause even if i miss out i know a lot of people were upset about um, missing out on the metallic toucan sand but i'm like yo they they raise money for a good cause so i'm down with that you know, some people felt like they should have produced more. And it's like, well, you want it because of the value. So if they produce more, value comes down. You know, you yeah. can't have it both ways. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they did that, you know, for good cause. I do kind of wish I had got the um the Veterans Day shirt that they did. That was to raise money, too, for um, veterans because it's a really dope shirt. I like the way that they designed it. But I was at work. I couldn't, you know, get on the website to get to it. But even though I missed out, it still feels good that they do these things for good causes, so I definitely give them props for that. Yeah, yeah, that's it's something I would like um, to see more. So that's some, it's not something I I, um, I mind or, or feel. Like, you know how sometimes companies come off as like, eh, you guys are doing this charity stuff because you just want to get your name out there. Or you just want to do this. It's like, this is a Funko Pop. I mean, t to me, it's it seems um, genuine. Like, yeah, like it really it does. Like a genuine thing. Because yeah. they don't go hard off the press. Like, they, they really no. are... Um, the community basically is the press for Funko. Like you don't see uh, like on like regular like commercials for Funko. I mean, any commercials they do are actually on their own social media. You know what I'm saying? It's like like yeah, not on yeah, network TV exactly. and stuff. So yeah, they're that's, that's, a very that's community exactly, oriented. Yeah, the, the point I wanted to make, you illustrated mm -hmm. it perfectly. Yeah, like you mm -hmm. don't see the commercials. You don't see like they're not trying to use this. Um, in some kind of gross way, like yeah, there's company. there's no 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 press conference held like we're about to do this, you know, this amazing thing, like yeah, none yeah. of that, yeah. So I, I give them a lot of a lot of props for that. Maybe you could help my memory. I I know you know there's the big three cons that they do every year, but then Funko is starting to do more with other conventions, and I can't remember if they've done anything, especially for WonderCon in the past. I mean. Because I, I, I just don't know WonderCon so well, and I think I confuse it with Decon sometimes. Is WonderCon the one where they have like the Stan Lees and stuff like that? The Stan Lee pops. Is that WonderCon or is that LA Comic Con? Or is LA Comic Con and WonderCon the same one? No, 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 no. I think they're no, they're separate. They're separate, separate locations. Um, oh, okay, yeah. See, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, because LA, LA, so Comic <laughs> LA Comic Con comes, um, I think after. New York Comic Con, it's like in that same neighborhood, you know, that oh, time of the year. Comic, and then there's Comic Kazi, and that's in LA too, isn't it? I uh, think so. Um, that's where they have the Stan Lee. Comic Kazi, that's the one with the Stan Lee, I think. Um, we, you know, could be mixing these up, but it's so easy to mix them up because, you know, these are smaller conventions. We just don't know as well. But um, yeah, they're doing more for WonderCon than I know of in the past, if, if they've even done anything in the past for WonderCon. So. Hopefully, um, nothing will change with, uh, you know, the release dates online for the selection that they do have. They haven't said anything about anything changing. So as of April 10th, that's when those uh, things are supposed to become available. Um, so we'll see what happens. But uh, what do you think about the uh, selection for WonderCon? It's all right. Um, it's there's nothing that I really need. I like I like the Cheshire Cat. If I had to pick one thing, it would be the Cheshire Cat. Yeah, I think putting the Cheshire Cat next to that Alice in a teacup, those two would look, you know, mm -hmm. pretty cool next to each other. I'm still not happy about that price that they, yeah, you know, tried to I sell that Alice too, for. It's too much. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It is not worth that um that price. But yeah, he he does look pretty cool. I, I like that they did Captain Adam. Um, and he's he gonna be with awesome. Am yeah, and he's gonna be with Amazon. Should be pretty easy to get. I think. I hope. I hope Amazon can be kind of funny sometimes, but hopefully it'll be easy to get, though. And Amazon tends to restock anyway, though. But I, I like Captain Adam because I actually, you know, I'm a big fan of the Justice League series and Justice League Unlimited. And he's been on there some. He's been in some of the movies as well. Like he was in um, uh, Superman and Batman Public Enemies. Um, I do like the character. Only thing that aggravates me about the character is like, you know, he's so powerful. It's like they have to play down his power for the sake of other characters. Because, I mean, he's basically, like, you know, living energy. Like, he can really cause some damage. But, they, yeah, they kind of underpower him on purpose. And that's 
all I mean, you've heard me talk about it before, but that's one of the one things that I don't like about DC character team ups. With me, I think DC characters should all be separate because I think their power levels just don't me- like don't go together. Yeah, like, I just feel well, like Batman and Superman shouldn't be on the same team. It it does it leads to inconsistencies. It mm-hmm. it definitely causes issues. Like there's been um some things that I've watched where I'm like this makes no sense. Like Superman getting into a fight with Lex Luthor in his power armor. And he punches Lex Luthor in the face. Like, yeah, no. Yeah, it's like, you would, have just, yeah. you would have just killed yeah. him, knocked his head clean off. So it's like, there, there's definitely some things that don't make sense. Oh, when it, they oh, have it's not just DC, because doesn't that happen also in, like, the Spider-Man movie? Like, Spider-Man 2? Like, like Doctor, uh, I think Dr. Octopus and uh, Spider-Man's punching him in the head. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 that um, guy. He's an old man. He would have killed him. And, yeah, there's some stuff that doesn't make sense there either. Like, yeah, um, Doctor Oc, he Doctor Octopus, he throws a car at Peter Parker, not knowing that he's Spider Man. Oh, so, yeah, that's right, huh? so he just, you know, he he uses his powers, basically his spider um sense, you know, to help him dodge the car. But it's like he didn't know that he could do that, so it it makes no sense. You know, you you All run right, into stuff like that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to me but, um, complaining about Funko Pops. Like, so one thing I don't like. I mean, I like the pop. It looks good, and it should be flogged. This Eevee, it's a great-looking pop. Mm. But didn't this just come out? Yeah, double dipping. Um, I mean, that's... Re- man. Actually, like, the uh, never, Pichu... You're never going to stop that. Pichu it's is like, at least more give, recent. Yeah. It's like, at least, get collectors, at least give collectors a few months in between. I mean, damn. Yeah. And you know you know how it goes, though. Everybody will complain and then purchase anyway and double dip. <laughs> you know, that's why they keep doing it. It actually surprised me. I didn't realize they hadn't done Miguel from Coco with the guitar already. Because when I saw it, like, yeah, immediately, kinda... I was like, wait, wait a minute. But, yeah, it's kind of odd that it hadn't been done already. I kind of like that one because I do have – what's the bad guy's name in that? It's not, it's not Ernesto. Uh, I forget uh-huh. what the bad guy's name is. I think it's a I can, great – I can picture pop. him, so. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's got the silver mariachi outfit. Great, great yeah. looking pop. I might get this one to go with it because that's the only one I have um, from that movie. So, And is it just me or does every single one of these Target Futura Star Wars pops look exactly the same? Well, I, I think I think you really got to see them up close. They they have a lot of details up close that really set them apart. Um Still not crazy about all the design, the designs. I think some of them look cool. It, it is a little awkward that they did the 10-inch Boba Fetts, and now they're doing the standard size ones. But I don't know. Maybe the 10-inch ones weren't produced in, like, especially large numbers, and then that makes a little bit more sense. But it, it's kind of tough to call that. But, I yeah. Guess. I, just, I just see, like, there's a – I just feel like there's an exclusive one of these at, like, a lot of little events and stuff. Mm. And they all just either look like they're a combination of a black pop with a red logo on it or a red pop with a black logo on it or or something like they, well, they no, all some of the other ones like are the more same detailed thing to me. Some <laughs> they of the just look like the same damn thing to me. <laughs> yeah, some some of the other ones are more detailed like the um C3PO um the R- R2D2 is weird to me. I don't know why it's like zebra print on R2D2 which is weird. I, I don't yeah. get why they did that. But the, the Jawa they have coming up, I think he has like a camel style to him or whatever. The Jawa looks kind of cool. But yeah, yeah, I guess I, I have to look them all closer. Yeah. It just makes me feel like, uh, what was that in Rush Hour? What was that Chris Tucker? When's all y'all look alike? That's just what I oh. feel like when I see these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think you could appreciate the details. You see them more up close, but it's still n- not really my thing, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, I mean, I can see how people think they're cool, though. I'm just, they, you know, I'm picky. And you know, WonderCon, they got the the trolls going on too, which I'm I'm kind of surprised that the trolls actually look pretty good up close. Like, and I I guess it's because you you really think about it, Funko Pops. I mean, the 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 troll design just works for them because some of the old troll dolls actually did have the solid black eyes. You know, so I mean, they yeah, just I look like the what they're trolls, supposed to be. I think the trolls was a clever um thing for Funko to do. Uh, because I think it's one of those things that I I didn't get one myself, but if I would have seen one maybe in person, I might have got it. Because yeah, everybody trolls were really popular when we were kids and um, teenagers and stuff. For a while, they were popular. I could see people just adding this, 
But I can also see people giving these trolls as gifts mm. to people that aren't Funko Pop collectors, but you know, maybe to brothers and sisters. Go, oh look, remember these trolls? I could see my myself giving one of these to my sister. Yeah, it's it's totally nostalgia. She loved, yeah, you, you know what I mean. And it's just like it's a Funko product that's a pop, but can also be given to somebody that, and it doesn't look anything like a pop. This person will get it and just go like, oh my god, they're making trolls again because they look just like the original trolls. And, they feel yeah, it was. Too. What's good about them, too, is, I mean, you take those out of box, I don't think anybody's going to lose their minds because, I mean, you know, we're, we're used to seeing the the old troll dolls, you know, just out and about in people's homes and collections or whatever. So, yeah, I, I think that's it's, – it's a good move. I think it's a good move to actually yeah, do the, the trolls. Yeah. And then the ones based on the uh, movie, too, Trolls World Tour or whatever, they actually have some pretty nice designs. I mean, it's not my thing, but they're they're kind of impressive, you know, for commons, um, some of the figures they have and even some of the exclusives. Yeah, like like to me, the the actual character designs to me are ugly, mm-hmm. but the execution into the pop I feel is impressive. Like like they they did they did a lot with an ugly design, in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> basically that's a good way to describe it. Um, and with WonderCon, really the main thing I'm excited about actually are the on um, the sodas that they're gonna have the soda vinyls because um, I think the character selection is pretty good. It's kind of interesting that. Uh, I think this is the first time they're going to have some sodas that actually don't have um, chase variants, but I'm okay with that because I actually do like the designs. I mean, they got that faker, um, this the gold Skeletor, you know. I'm not so sure about getting um, that Ramona Flowers because I already got the pink-haired one from um, Emerald City Comic Con. Is she not... just a repaint or do they put, like, uh, a different body on her? That's I'm not really sure. I have to take a look, kind of compare side by side. It seems... I don't know. I, I just like the pink hair, so I'm good with that. And Knives, Knives is actually probably my least favorite character from the movie, to be honest. Yeah. So I'm not so sure about getting her. But I, I like the other ones they had. They got the Speed Racer, um, Fruit Brute, and Yummy Mummy. I, I'm, I think I'll get all of those. So look, so there's another good example of what we were talking about earlier when um, not the non-popular character becomes pricey. Because I, I want to say that when... Um, Scott Pilgrim Pops first started becoming vaulted. Knives was one of the first ones to shoot up to like 40 bucks, 40, 50 bucks, something like that. Way before all the other ones, way before Ramona or Scott. Hmm. I, you know, I kind of, uh, I actually now have a very small Scott Pilgrim collection, and that's mainly actually because um, of, you know, gifts that I received. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a very tough series to collect. But I, yeah, I like that. I kind of like that the, um, the pops are actually helping to drive up the popularity. Like more people are checking out the movie that weren't familiar with it before. Yeah, I like that. I feel like a lot of pops have that effect on on people. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So WonderCon, you know, I, I I'll go for what I can get. You know, see, and I'm, I'm not really gonna stress over it. this is pretty small convention thing, but at least it's something for collectors to look forward to. You know, and then Funko will have their vir- virtual con thing again with their games and live streams and all that stuff i don't i'm not i don't really follow that stuff so much myself but it's still cool that they're doing that for collectors um yeah that's fun for people yeah it's it's not for me either i am i'd rather watch almost anything else but i could see people have fun with that and it's it's nice that they do that like funko although they are big they're publicly traded now they do do a good job doing that kind of stuff make it still makes them seem like a kind of a smaller community yeah. drip kind of company yeah, yeah, I do. I still kind of wish that they had. Um, <laughs> this is gonna sound mean, but there's really no other way to say it. I kind of wish they had better personalities, like you know, <laughs> some some better social media people. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just find the ones. I mean, honestly, I find the ones that they have now <laughs> just so dry and uninteresting. I well, mean, I, I like I like a little less milk on my toast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I, when they when I first started collecting, I mean, they had Yoko, and I know people had different feelings about her, I but um, her, I liked her. Yeah, I thought she had a good personality, I and um, annoying, but at least she had a personality. <laughs> yeah, well, she mean? still had to she still had to tow the company line, but yeah, at least she she didn't seem like a robot, <laughs> you know, the way that yeah. some some of them come across. So yeah, but um, but yeah, I, like I said, I, I like the, that they are doing this community stuff and keeping things moving in that way. But honestly, um, yeah, uh, I feel like I'm really more so focusing on other types of collectibles right now. I'm really, really pumped about some other things that are available, which a lot of people that are just in the Funko Overlook, of course, 
But I, I think there's some other cool stuff out there. But I'm definitely getting back into my WWE elites. Um, and I, I know wrestling is fake. So are movies. I watch wrestling not because I'm sitting there uh, throwing a bet on who's going to win a fake wrestling match. It's kind of like a circus, right? And the sillier, yeah. the better. So disclaimer out of the way, I like wrestling. Um, it's nostalgic as hell for me, okay? And WrestleMania is tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, I, I might do a video. I got all my elites out. Um, some of them are pretty pricey. And, yeah, I forgot how cool they are, right? And Wait, I wait did, a minute. Yeah, are they just still having WrestleMania? Supposedly, so yeah, he, you know, Vince McMahon, one of the hardest headed persons in the world, um, <laughs> was definitely not wanting to cancel WrestleMania. Finally, conceded, I believe they're gonna have it at the performance center with no audience. So, uh, not sure how that's gonna work out. They did a Monday Night Raw with no audience, and believe it's awkward. It's, I, I'm gonna watch it, um, just because I know that after. There's just going to be tons and tons of videos on it, tons and tons of opinion, and I'm going to be stuck at home, and it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, stuff to watch because of this. I mean, it's, it's WrestleMania with no audience. It's going to be insane. Oh, I mean, it's going to be not insane. It's insane that they're going through with it, I mean. Well, I know that the, um, like the you know, UFC has been talking about doing some events in that way as well, but with the UFC, and actually they already did an event, an event in that way, but with the UFC, it kind of works just because they do have the Ultimate Fighter series where... There's not really an audience there. You know, there might be, you know, I mean, the other fighters are there watching or whatever, but it's not like a massive audience or anything. So I'm kind of used to seeing that with USC, but WWE well, I mean, relies so much on the crowd. <laughs> like, yeah, WWE it's, it's like, is it all about crowd interaction. Yeah, it's like, it's like UFC, the guy that wins is the guy that can kick the other guy's ass. Like yeah. in WWE, part of the whole thing is like going over with the crowd. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, it just doesn't make any sense. I think I think McMahon should have just canceled it, waited. Because even even then, like, dude, I, I don't care how – like, I don't care if they tested the wrestlers last week. How are they going to know what that wrestler has done in the past week? Do you Would you really want to wrestle with somebody in close quarters right now with, with all yeah. this going on? I wouldn't. And, and WWE relies, too, on – um, they rely on the crowd noise covering – like some of their signaling and some of the things that they do yes. in the ring. Like there's been um, some WWE events where there's a quiet moment and you might hear something you're not really supposed to hear. Like I've, I remember, in fact, I never forget um, when Undertaker finally lost at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. If you like, they, I don't think they intended for this to happen, but there's a moment where you can actually hear him telling Brock Lesnar to hit me with the F5 again. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> like no, you're not do. supposed to hear stuff like that, you know, so. So, like, Ron, Ronda Rousey, too. Ronda Rousey, when she first started, and, he, and even tore, almost towards her last matches, I don't know if she's coming back or not, since she is physically a real fighter, and she could pretty mess up a lot of these girls. Like, Alexa Bliss is a small, tiny, like, five-foot girl, right? You can hear Ronda Rousey, like, getting them, about to do some move, and, and literally going, are you ready? <laughs> like, like really loud, going, are you ready? <laughs> you can wow. hear, like, Alexa was going, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> and, it, wow. and then she'll slam him, right? But, you know, she doesn't want to hurt him. But, yeah. So so there's another aspect of it. Like, so WrestleMania tomorrow, there's going to be another thing about it. It's interesting is you're going to really see who the really good technical performers are. The yeah. really good wrestlers. Because with no crowds, with no wide-angle shots, with no pyrotechnics, I mean, this is all going to be really close and intimate, and you're going to see, like, the people that aren't relying on just, you know, I'm popular, I'm over with the crowd. Like, it's going to be the guys are technically technically really good are going to shine. Yeah, it's that's going to be so awkward. Because even for the announcers, it's, it's going to be weird. They're going to be yelling, oh, my God, like, you know, with nobody else there. It's just, yeah. Oh, no, and there has been. Like, there was a couple where – um a couple of weeks ago, like Stone Cold was on there and he says something, right? I forget exactly what he says, but he's talking to the crowd and, and he's like, you know, he's talking to the crowd, like doing, he's not changing his shtick. And then the camera pans to the crowd, dude, and it's all empty seats. And it's like in silence. And then it goes back to Stone Cold. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, what was that? Like, why wouldn't you cut that out? <laughs> it's just so weird. <laughs> it's weird. But so but what's if the, anybody um... wants to watch this, uh, shit showed happen. Um, you can get WrestleMania for free, basically. It's basically one of those things where you sign up for WWE Network, 
and the first month is free, and then you oh, just cancel. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you're curious. <laughs> but um, with the WWE elites that you collect, is it mostly um like classic wrestlers, like or? Or so the, a... it's it's a mix. It's kind of like it's just like the um because I want to say it's Mattel that makes the legends too, right? The Marvel um, legend. Oh no, Hasbro. Hasbro. Oh, Marvel. Hasbro. So so it's similar to those ones, right? Where it's they'll have old school ones, new ones. Like so, I have like I'll have some that are like the old school Ultimate Warrior, and then I'll have some that are like um the Fiend, which is one of the newer characters, right? Mm. Like um. So yeah, it's you can kind of make a nice little nostalgic collection, mix in some new guys in there, and they all kind of go together, similar to like pops, I guess. I know but I've seen cool, um yeah. Ric Flair before, <laughs> like that. Ric yeah, Flair Ric Flair is dope. Are cool. Um, mm. What's cool about the elites too is that they're all, um, you know how all pops are like four inches, or all GI Joes are like three and a quarter. So yeah. like with the elites, if in real life the wrestler is like seven foot, and then you have a female wrestler that in real life is five foot. The pops are proportionate. I mean, the pops, the, the figures. actual figures. <laughs> yeah, figures. Yeah, they're, they're, they're proportionate, which I think is really cool. Mm. Yeah, that, I, I like when um you know they do that sometimes. Um, yeah, because with pops, you definitely run into a lot of awkward scale things. Like I remember even when they first did the light. It's funny because I still have the life size groups, <laughs> you know. But now there's all these other ten inch figures, so it's kind of weird now. You know, like Groot is the same size as Thanos, so yeah, a <laughs> little, little yeah, awkward there. I feel like with the ten inch pops, it's almost like one of those ones where you have just like one as a centerpiece, like for your collection. Like you pick the one that you want. Like, like to me aesthetically, that's that's what's most pleasing to me. You just mm. pick one big one for your collection. Yeah, out and have it out of the box. Yeah, I can see that, but I, I definitely have more. Um, more 10 inch figures than I thought I would get um, and might even pull the trigger eventually on the uh, 18 inch Batman if I could find it at a good price see now that see that's one of the ones where like um, if I could get my I, I like the 18 inch Batman that came out of the Funko shop that was like super limited because the oh, yeah. black one what I don't what I don't like about the black one is that in all the pictures I've seen all the videos I've seen the plastic on the head seems it's either the plastic on the head or the plastic on the body one of them seems more like um dull like opaque than the other yeah i see and that I, sometimes it, it drives yeah. me it drives me nuts that would drive mm. me crazy in person mm. well i'm hoping um i'm hoping they like i don't want them to do too many of the 18 inch ones but i'm hoping they'll do galactus that way because that would make so much mm. sense you know that that'd well, be just dope, a but... really detailed one man could you imagine like I don't know, dude, like uh, Ma Maleficent with the flames in 18 inches. Something like that would be amazing. Because Batman is so plain. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, the Batman is somewhat plain. As a matter of fact, I actually prefer, it came out years ago, but the um, the Batman Super Deluxe Vinyl, like, I, I would prefer that over the 18-inch Batman, actually, because that one has more personality, more style to it, to me. Um, and I know some people, you know, newer collectors may not even be familiar with that, but yeah, there used to be these super deluxe vinyls, and I actually have the um, the Rocket and Groot one, you know, and there were a couple of others. Um, there was actually a Harley Quinn one like that as well, you know, the super yeah, those deluxe were vinyl. Cool. Well, they only made like maybe a handful of those, right? Yeah, they, they yeah, there there weren't very many of them, but they they have some personality to them. I like the style of them, you know. So, and mm -hmm. some some of those older ones, I might still go for them if I can come across them, you know. Yeah, the, to me the large format, like so, like the large format can really improve a pop. Like, so one of the pops I always thought was I liked it because it's the Heath Ledger Joker, right? So to me, I'm like, oh, we gotta have Heath Ledger Joker, but it looks so much better because it is detailed. But that large mm -hmm. format, what they made it in ten inches, yeah, it's basically the same kind of pop, but they did resculpt it, and it just it definitely looks. It looks better. so to yeah, me. It looks the more better. detailed, the better ten inch pop. Yeah, I was not a fan of the original um, Heath Ledger Joker, but now I am because with the with the ten inch one, it's just something about the proportion, especially with the eyes, that the, makes them more the natural. Hair. I felt like the, the eyes stood out too much on the original one. Yeah. So yeah, the ten inch one, I, I haven't um ordered it yet. I probably should have when um you know lunch money was going on and hot cash and all of that. You know, I, I probably should have went ahead and did it, but it is something I will get eventually. Dude, can you imagine, like, some of those Overwatch pops in just, like, 
10 inch or even 18 inch like that mercy or something like that that would be a, a 10 inch or even 18 inch almost any of the overwatch characters like something like that yeah i, I think would be kind of like would blow people's minds like definitely yeah. centerpiece but I, I hope they do make it you know like sort of a special thing like just you know just a couple a year you know yeah. like right now i think it's just you know more recently the um the batman ones and then there i think there's an 18 inch harry potter on the way as well which makes sense yeah, that, you know that he's yeah, a hugely a popular one. character yeah so um i feel like they're gonna feel like they have to do a marvel you know it's always this dc marvel thing <laughs> they feel like they have to you know do dc a, do marvel a star wars yeah and now it's exactly. gonna be dc marvel star wars uh pokemon are gonna be the 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 four horsemen yeah so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the well, it's what's funny though is I mean, 18 inches that's still not like huge, but it actually is probably too large for some characters though. When you really think about it, um, yeah, like Batman to me, to me, the 18 inch Batman is cool in theory, but when you blow up something that's not very detailed like that sculpt, I think it, it starts to look cheaper in a big scale. Well, no. What, what I what I mean by it though is the actual like when you think about the actual character, like there are some characters that are so tiny that even at eighteen inches, that might be it might seem larger than uh, the character yeah, should yeah. be. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> like, because there are some characters that are pretty small. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> in terms of scale, it might just be kind of awkward. You know. So I hope they're smart about their um the decisions with that moving forward. Um. I meant to ask you, do you have uh, like statues in your collection? Uh, no, I've there's all throughout the years, there's been statues I really wanted to get, but that's the, one of the one things where I've been able to just stop myself and be like, no, you don't need to spend 800 bucks on that. Well, I'm, I'm getting drawn in, and actually, there's a lot of statues you can get. Um, I'm, I'm learning, you know, to shop around, and you can get some statues pretty cheap for like. Um, sometimes 30 40 bucks even on sale like GameStop especially if you see statues at GameStop give it a while <laughs> because oh, yeah. it's bound to get marked down to be really cheap you know so you can find some cheap statues but I am getting to the point where um I'm really in love with DC statues mainly and I just um ordered uh two Joker busts I'm I'm usually not into busts but these are pretty cool and um yeah I'm really starting to think high end as well like treating myself to something major you know this year because uh that's just where i am with collecting like i really like to mix things up in general but i'm I'm really in love with statues right now well yeah and too and then I, i'm always the kind of person like with my cars or whatever like i'd rather wait a long time in between buying a new car and then when i do get that new car it's going to be pretty slick right it's going to be exactly what i want instead of like buying a crappy car every three years like if you want a statue, it's probably be in the long run make you happier. Like you say, just really go all out, spoil yourself a little bit instead of nickel and diming the same amount into a bunch of stuff you're not gonna love as much. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm trying to be yeah I'm trying to be picky about it because there you know statues can get pricey and once you get to you know, they're above. really amazing looking, dude. So yeah. I'm pretty sure you're gonna get one, and you're like, I need another one. <laughs> and you know what? Is statues make you pickier too? Because if you spend like, let's say, over 200 on something, and there's some a flaw, it just it feels major. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah, well, I'm dude, definitely gonna be picky about it. Brutal stuff on YouTube is watching people unbox like a two thousand dollar statue, and it's like broken. Yeah. And it's like from overseas, so like the return process is probably gonna be <laughs> really hard, right? Or even just get replacement parts. Like that kind of stuff to me is just brutal, dude. <laughs> and yeah. I believe too that the statue, like I, I think like you say, waiting on statues, looking for good prices is really smart because I do think that in the statue market, like buyer's regret is just heavy. Like because statues are so yeah. expensive and they take a lot of space, and the wives and, and the girlfriends, yeah. And, and honestly, dude, like the wives and the girlfriends, you know, a lot of them don't like the collectibles. They really don't like the statues. The statues, it's like you—you you really have to make space 
for a statue. I mean, pops, you can stack them on top of each other. And eventually, you know, when you build a collection, yeah, they start to kind of crowd things. But a statue is like, okay, th this lives here now. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you, you really got to make that space for it. So, I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a statue. Like, when you think about it, you go to somebody like, like, you know, you go to somebody that's like very wealthy, you go to their home and they got a statue. That statue, like, is kind of like in the middle of their living room, right? Or it's kind of like very, it's very predominantly displayed. It's, it's actually, it's a real commitment to get a statue. Yeah. Yeah, for some people, it's like the first thing you see you walk in a house. Like they get, yeah. it's like by the door, you know. Like they they had to find some place to put this thing. Yeah, but um, yeah, I I think I really would like to treat myself to um a sideshow collectible statue, and might be the only one I ever get because like if I was a rich man, like sideshow like would just would I'd be in trouble with them. Oh, me but, too. Um, <laughs> Cause I mean they do such good work and i like also that they actually have other companies you know represented on their website as well so but uh yeah yeah i'd be in trouble with them for sure oh, because... dude, if, if i was rich if i was rich i would probably build myself uh some kind of museum just for my collections. yeah i was just <laughs> you thinking know the I mean? same thing <laughs> like yeah a, a i would building just for all my crap <laughs> yeah i would straight up have those stands where it's like the the stand and the glass case and all of that yeah. like yeah i would go all out if i was a nice rich. collector dude i i could probably charge admission it would be i would have a lot of rarities <laughs> if i was rich of course yeah yeah but um but uh, yeah, there are, there is some stuff that is more affordable. Um, I like DC collectibles. You know, the stuff that they do has a lot of variety to it, especially with their Artist Alley line. You know, which has some interesting stuff. And um, I also like Kota Bakia as well. I, I really like Kota Bakia, yeah. and their their prices. They they do have a range of prices. They have some cheaper ones that run like they they got the ones where you actually like it's some, it almost feels like a figure, but you kind of snap it together, it comes in a couple pieces, and then you know once you snap it together, it's essentially a statue. Um. I think that's their artifacts line, and those are a cheaper. And they hold their value pretty well, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, and I, they, always and look I like at that. that. Like, you know. They're obviously a little bit anime inspired, but they don't push it. I mean, to, I mean, there are some where they really push the style, but um, for the most part, especially with the Marvel and DC ones, like it's it's true to the character. So, but that's kind of what I like about it too. It's like, okay, I've seen. Marvel characters look like Marvel characters a million times. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, yeah. I think part of the appeal of it is that, like, yeah. kind of like how when you know we, we we got all excited about that Ninja Batman. Yeah, I've seen Batman a million times. Like, why would I care if Batman was in Japan if he just looked like regular Batman? The reason it's cool yeah. is because it looks like a samurai. You know yeah. what I mean? The movie sucked, but you know what I mean. I was so ready to put down money on collectibles based on that movie. And then the movie is so bad. It's like, I don't want that stuff in my home. I don't need reminders. I really don't need reminders. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the stat I'm, I'm into the statues lately. Um, Oh, it's something else. I, I do have a little project. I'm kind of working on. I really want to, um, NECA has the aliens versus predator figures based off of the arcade game which I was a big fan of that arcade game. As a matter of fact, um, there's a um, a store at Myrtle Beach that actually had the arcade game, and then it was suddenly gone. Like, I actually went there one day with a roll of quarters ready to play this game, <laughs> and it wasn't there. And I was like, what happened? And the guy was like, it was like their lowest earning game. And I was like, oh, what man, because I... It was awesome. Yeah, that really. Awesome. I, I, think, I think part of it, though, might be where they had it placed, because it was kind of placed in an uncomfortable position where there's like a walkway like right behind you if you're standing there trying to play so i think that might have been part of it but i love that game and i do have the um i now have like the the main characters i got two of the predators they have a third predator but i don't know why like maybe it's something from the game i'm not remembering but i got the two predators the two human characters so now i'm trying to get a couple of the xenomorphs and i basically want to have a shelf where i kind of put together like uh you know like a diorama sort of uh, yeah, based on awesome. that game so that that's the little thing that i'm kind of working on right now i'm really looking forward to getting that all together i'm not like rushing trying gotta to have it done uh, immediately. One of the backgrounds got to get one of the backgrounds yeah. from the game and print it yeah. out you know what i mean put it all together yeah. that'll be sick exactly it's gonna take a little bit to put together but i think it'll be worth it and it's just it's such nostalgia and like i actually want that game still like um i haven't been into the arcade one up so much but if they can put together a cabinet with that game and a couple of other good ones along with it, then, 
Yeah, I'm, they might get me is on it, that one. I want to say that's is it available like on PlayStation Network or something like that? I want to say that game's uh, available on one on one of them, Steam or one of that one of those. I'll have to check and see. I mean, you know, if it's on PSN, I could grab it um, if it's available. I'll have to check and see. It seems, seems like I would have realized that, but who knows? And, and if it's on there, um, now they do have their streaming service. Um, I forget what they call it, but I'm not into that. Like, you got to have really high internet for that to even work properly. And I'm in a rural area, so it's like I'm not going to waste my money on choppy games, you know? Yeah, and I'm just like, I think, I think if I ever start playing another video game it's going to be on the playstation 5 probably because i know i'm going to get one um yeah. just because i'm so used to like having the playstation be my hub for everything yeah um that i, I just probably it's probably gonna wait I, although i do like that that the look of that new game coming out was it cyberpunk that does look interesting yeah yeah um, i might try that out but i don't know i just i'm just so busy lately that um I don't know. I just feel games are so they're so hard for me now that I feel like I have to study <laughs> to play them. You know, and yeah, like really yeah. Learn something where I'm like, ah, I'm too busy for this. Yeah, there because there's some games I love, but I haven't gone back to them just because it's like I know it's almost like I'd have to refresh myself on okay, what am I doing here? Like um, like Bloodborne. I love Bloodborne to death. My favorite game of all time. But Bloodborne is, there's a lot of little details to it that you got to remember to get to certain areas and whatnot. So I've done New Game Plus on it like maybe twice. And it's like, I don't want to reset it. Like I have everything, you know, it's like I have all the stuff <laughs> I want. I'm not going to reset it. So like if I go in at all, I'm just going back through old areas or going in the Chalice Dungeons trying to help people out and, and whatnot. But I don't want to reset the game at this point. Yeah. But, but as far as PS5 is concerned, I'm, I might actually... I'm, with PS4, I was day one. I don't think I'm going to be day one with PS5. I think I actually want to wait a little bit. Well, yeah, I don't like to be day one with any electronics because I always feel like the first batch of whatever, phones or whatever, always have little bugs and stuff in it or like maybe even the physical casing for it isn't exactly right. I always feel like it's better to wait. Um, yeah. And get that well, first batch sh shockingly, yeah, shockingly, I have a day one PS4 that still works no problem. <laughs> <laughs> now the controllers are definitely worn. I do need a new controller because I'm I'm having drift issues like crazy right now with this controller I've had for a good while. But other than that, though, like it's it's been solid. But um, I've had mine for a while. Yeah, I think the only yeah. thing I've noticed is that my controllers don't hold a charge as long as they used to. Yeah, I feel I like have that last too. two hours tops. Yeah, I, I I get that issue too. Speaking of PlayStations and streaming, so. With a lot of time on my hands, man, there's a couple of things I've been watching that's been kind of weird, dude. Like, have you heard of Beastars on Netflix? Oh, um, <laughs> it's, in, it's, it's in my queue. I haven't, like, I haven't actually watched it yet. It's um, weird. <laughs> I know, the, like, the prim let, let people know the premise in case they're not familiar so, with it. So the premise is pretty much, it's, imagine Zootopia, but, like, as an anime and more with more complex issues going on. Yeah, like uh, it's <laughs> predators and prey is mixing together, and predators needing to uh, control their predator side. It's it's very hard to explain. And if you go to watch it, it it's going to look like it's it's furries and stuff, but it's not. It's 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 one of those wonderful things in anime where it's so bizarrely weird, yet the the emotions underneath the bizarre like otherworldliness is very real and it's just it's, it's it's interesting so it's like they're trying to have a society but they still have their animal instincts though yes right pretty yeah much. Pretty much. yeah so that is it is very similar to zootopia actually mm -hmm. in that way but there's a love story at the center of it right so i'm only about four episodes in and yes there's like a love story kind of um but you know they're confused as like they're <laughs> It's like, do I love? It's like, does he goes, do I love her as a person, or do I love her in the same way that I love steak? You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and, and he's confused. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I'll probably give that a try. Like, I haven't been into um too many um you know anime series. Um, I don't even know. Like, okay, Castlevania technically is anime because it does have that style, but I you know, think... it comes from the video game though, so it's not like. I think usually when people say anime, they're talking about, like, an original property. You know what I'm saying? And I think people consider that anime needs to be made in Japan, too. Yeah. It needs to be but, Japanese. Um, and I, I don't like, know like, where, so, like... 
So like Afro Samurai, I think what like so like Afro Samurai, I think is actually American. So there, there's like that debate of is it anime or is it not? It looks like anime. I mean, if somebody told me it was made in Japan, I wouldn't question it. But it's American, so people don't consider it anime. Now, is Castlevania made in America? Because if it is, I think it's in the same area as like Afro Samurai. Well, I mean, Castlevania being old school Nintendo. I mean, Capcom, you know, is based in oh, Japan. Oh yeah. So that's true. But it's still, it feels American though. Like you know, it feels it, like it, it did, was made. It did to me. Yeah, it feels like it was made with a um, you know Western audience in mind. So or maybe a global audience, maybe. Yeah, it is but, but I, don't, I don't know. Regardless, though, the Castlevania series is is pretty good. Like if if you, I mean, you don't necessarily even have to be an anime fan. If you just like um, you know, good action um, and you like that whole horror aesthetic that they have there with the vampires and all of that, like Castlevania is good, and I, it has some really likable characters. Like I really like, um, especially uh, I keep forgetting her name. Like how to say her name? I, I could see how it's spelled in my mind. But like the lead, the lead female character, I really fell in love with that I character. Don't rem- yeah, I don't remember. Is it like like it if I like if I like Berserk, would I like uh, Castlevania? Because that's that's so that's another thing that so I have um, the first few volumes of the Berserk um, uh, anime that's collected, but they collect or the manga they collected it like in a larger format in these like hard like leather bound books. They're super amazing. Um, so I'm really into Berserk, and Berserk is basically you know manga anime. Um, that's like in medieval times, and Castlevania kind of seems like it'd be very similar. Um, I, I never really saw Berserk. Like I know, I know of it. I haven't actually watched it. I actually played the Berserk game back in the oh, day. Oh, really? Enough. That I, I never think there played. was a Berserk <laughs> game. Um, I think it was on Dreamcast. Actually, I think it was. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, but I so that, that. that's I never like. Played it. Yeah, so that's been like my only exposure to Berserk. You know, but um, yeah, I never watched the series, but um. Yeah, there are some anime. Like, I just looked it up to be sure. Yeah, Afro Samurai actually is based off a of manga, but it still feels very um, American. So, Oh, really? Afro it's... Samurai? I thought the animation was uh, American. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. But it's, it's, it's manga. I mean, it's, you know, based off a of manga and everything, but it's it blurs the line, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Because there are some anime made with, like I said, a Western audience in mind, and even their aesthetics cross over into the West a lot more. I mean, there's a lot of hip-hop and everything. What was there one? There was Samurai. one... Is it? Oh, maybe, maybe I'm. You know what? You know, I think I'm thinking of um, Avatar: The Last Airbender because that's American, isn't it? It looks like it. I mean, the animation style. Uh, I I don't know for sure, but it definitely looks. I'm all confused. Now. It looks more <laughs> American. Yeah, yeah. It's it's tough because everything does blur together now. It really does. Okay, so but, another really good thing I think that's definitely worth watching, whether you're into it or not, on Vice. TV.com. You can watch several episodes of Dark Side of the Ring, and it's like little. Do- it's documentaries basically on um, wrestling. So like uh, the death oh, of Bruce yeah. Brody. Yeah, I've seen um, that. Um, Macho Elizabeth. Man Elizabeth story. Super good. Super well done. Yeah, I've I've seen those listed. I've, I've actually seen people um talking about it on social media. Yeah, I which... definitely recommend those. I don't even know if I could watch that stuff, man. Because I remember I watched um. I forget the name of the documentary, but there was a documentary on, um, you know, the old school wrestlers, and it, it focused a lot like on Jake the Snake and yeah, you know, I you know the that, movie. That was the one on HBO. It's called Behind the Ring, maybe. I think it's but, called Behind the Ring or, or Behind or Beyond the Mat, something like that. The mat. That that sounds right. But the one yeah. where, um, because you know the the movie The Wrestler uh, with Mickey Rourke was yes. really based on Jake the Snake and yes. And but but hearing Jake the Snake just talk about the things that had been going on in his life and everything, it's like it was so sad. I was like, wow, like it's heavy. Like this, it gets pretty heavy what goes on with wrestlers behind the scenes. The Jake the Snake scenes were pretty heartbreaking. Although I do, I, I didn't watch Beyond the Mat until after I knew that Jake the Snake was kind of in da- uh, Diamond Dallas Page, his, his whole recovery center. So mm-hmm. like when when yeah when. When that came out, Jake the Snake was in a really bad place. But I didn't watch it until years later when I knew he was kind of, like, clean. So, you know, it didn't make me as sad. You know what did make me really sad, though? Was the segments with Mankind. And when you see little Noelle Foley, she's hella little. 
and mankind's just getting beaten up. He's bleeding. Yeah, like, rock, yeah. Like, jumping up and down, and you can yeah, tell that I saw that. The kids, that was they're rough. legit terrified. Yeah, they're like they're like, dude, like because yeah, even if they understand that, okay, it's not real. Daddy's doing his job. He's still bleeding. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's really getting hurt. Like you can't. Yeah. You. No human being can jump from that height, like be thrown from that height off a cage through a table and not be hurt for real. Like, well, yeah, dude, and that's not even a rougher one because, like, the table breaks, right? And it's mm-hmm. designed to break your fall a little bit. The one where he tosses them from the top of the cage straight onto the canvas, like, that's mm-hmm. like there's no table, nothing. You just hit that canvas, and it's just like, bro, dude, that is like, how are you alive? It's brutal. Like, but I mean, yeah, if people can. You know, for anybody that's into wrestling, I think they would want to check out those. Um, you know, the new one though. Um, what's Dark what's it called again? Dark Side yeah, of Dark the Side Ring. Of the even if Dark you're Side not into wrestling, even if you're just into people, like, there's nobody that's in professional wrestling that's like a normal person. The most normal person in professional wrestling is mankind. Is you know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. the most normal person, and he's out of his mind. Yeah, I think they're. It's a whole other world, basically. You can tell it's a, it's just a whole other world, a whole other way of thinking, a whole other way of living, really, for them. It's fascinating to me, to be honest. It's, it's just it, these people live a life that it, it's just most of us can, can't even fathom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, since, since you're touching on something that's related to real life, let, let's just we, we got to get it out of the way. <laughs> this. What, what are your thoughts on Tiger King? I loved it. <laughs> It's when when I was watching it, like in the second episode, I had to stop it and go. I thought this was a documentary because it's so over the top that I had to double check to make sure this wasn't another thing like that. Uh, uh, what was that? American Vandal, where it's like a fake yeah. documentary. Yeah, I had a double check. Mockumentary. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, dude, they went way too over the top of these characters. I mean, they went way, way over the top, but it's real. <laughs> it's just insane. Yeah. Everything about every single person in that thing is, you know, I take it back. Wrestlers aren't the craziest people. People that keep tigers uh, as pets are the craziest people on the planet. Yeah, and I've I only watched um, two or three episodes, and I was just like, this is number one in America. Like, <laughs> like okay, I I know the situation. I know we're bored. I know we need to be entertained. But I'm like, this is just, <laughs> it's, it's just too much for me. It's not well. It's yes, not that it's I too much, it, but it's man. just like. <laughs> It's just like it's like it's so insane. Like the um, the the hypocrisy within it, I think, is what gets me more than anything. Like they don't realize how hypocritical they're being, and and you know um, well, dude, the, the self awareness is absolutely non-existent. I yeah, mean, this exactly. guy is selling panties in the gift shop at a zoo. It, it looks like a porn shop. It, it, it's it's absolutely insane. And, and what's the main guy's name? Joe Exotic or whatever. Joe Exotic. And and him going to war against the woman. Um, the woman. I keep forgetting her name too. Um, oh, as much Bass. as yeah, yeah. It's they're at war with each other, and I'm like, and you look at their places, and it's like you're the same. Like, why? Why are yeah, you at each other? That other's lady throat? is just trying to steal. She's just trying to steal his tigers. That's all she's trying to do. And she's just using. She's just using. Uh. uh some BS about saving the tigers to win. That's all she's doing. Like she's she was the worst person ever. Like the other ones are are, are unabashedly themselves. And like it was so funny when they're showing the guy that like I forget his name, but the other tiger guy that had that's got all the wives. And at first they kind of start showing him going like, oh he's the one that's kind of got it more together. His zoo is a little nicer. And you're like, oh well there's there's a normal one. And then you start to see the ponytail. And then you start to see the compound and how he lives one house and his wife lives in another and then you start mm-hmm. to find out there's more than one wife and you're like what in the hell is going and on and he here? likes to <laughs> and he likes to stroll around on his elephant uh, yeah i'm just like no and, and then those girls it's like obviously he gets some somehow they're like they're like homeless or something right he gives them a home and he gets them so trapped into life not how to function yeah. yeah how to function in the real world that they can't mm-hmm. even leave because they're like what well, how can i leave like i don't even know i don't even have a bank account <laughs> I was just like, oh my god. Like all these people, every single one of them need to be arrested. 
Yeah, his spot felt like like, and that's where I kind of bailed on it. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this because <laughs> I, I it, it felt it felt so much like a like a what do they call it a commune or you know a cult type situation. Cult. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is just too too much. I for mean, me. I've I've been on a commune. A commune's not that. That was a cult. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, it's it's crazy. Just just crazy. It's too too much for me. But I mean, I guess. You know, some people like that stuff that's over the top, especially if, if people are into like the reality shows, like especially, you know, the ones on VH1, then I could see them, you know, going all in with Tiger King. But it, it's not for me personally. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and there's definitely cheesy kind of sh- like hacky documentary things on, about like, you know, the typical camera shots. They introduce somebody new and they'll be like standing, crossing their arms and it pans up like it's, you know. Like, it's just crappy reality TV. But I did find it kind of fascinating. Uh, uh, as far as... Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go well, ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to change it. So I was going to be like, speaking of something completely fascinating as well, and also dark, but in a lot more scary kind of way, and it does make... It, it did break my heart a little bit for the people, because I've always kind of been fascinated by North Korea. Right. It just seems like it's something out of a book or, you know, like 1984. It's just it's a real life 1984. And but this guy and his YouTube channel is just called The People. He's got three videos. One of them's called something about North Korea, part one. And then he went to Wuhan during the covid virus. And then he did North Korea, part two that he just posted a few days ago. Each one's about an hour, the North Korea ones. But this guy basically sneaks into North Korea, films everything, films the actual people. Um, I've never seen so much of actual, the real Korea filmed before, um, where all the other ones that like Vice has done and stuff, they're all kind of, they, they do what they can. But this guy really, I, I believe he really risks his life to make these videos. Definitely recommend them. His channel is called The People. Um, and it's, if you look up The People, Korea, it'll probably be the first things that pop up. Definitely recommend watching those. But they're, they're hard to watch. There's some really messed up stuff in them, though. You've been watching some intense stuff. <laughs> I have, man. Because I'm, I'm telling you, dude, like, this whole thing gets into my head. And I'm watching, you know, I'm reading World War Z. Like, have you ever read the book World War Z? Like, the movie, I used to, I used to like the movie. But after reading the book, which actually one of my the subscribers book is very different. Right. The book is amazing, dude. You should definitely. I know. I know you don't. I know you like to read mostly comics and stuff, but I definitely recommend World War Z. It's not written like a typical book. It's really pretty excellent. Yeah. Um. We we could maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll talk about some reading. Um. You know that we've been doing in the future as well. But uh, cause I yeah I'm, I'm noticing some things about reading, especially uh realize some things about Harley Quinn the way that she's portrayed by writers that I guess I wasn't super aware of previously, but I've learned about it more recently, but you know, we can kind of say that for another time. Um, I, I, you know, I guess you're like right now, you're maybe more so into, um, uh, you know, real world type stuff as far as what you're watching. Yeah. Like I'll watch, I'll watch a lot of real world stuff. I, you know, of course I got to watch the news and let that piss me off a little bit and then i'll watch then, then i'll go watch or read something that's you know not real world stuff but it'll s- still somehow be related like like uh like world war z right you know it's kind of about a pandemic you know especially the book the book has just like the movie contagion world war z the book has some very eerie eerie parallels to what's going on now and the way it's been handled um very interesting to read i think at this moment in history that book yeah um, see and then uh, i also read another uh, book by um a lot of people if they like manga they've probably heard of um junji ito ito junji ito i think is how you say it. i'm probably saying it wrong right it's japanese junji uh junji ito i think and he wrote a book named uh gyo right and it's kind of like the same thing it's about <laughs> this weird things start crawling out of the ocean and it's like an infestation and it starts to infect all the people and it's basically you know it's the same thing so my crazy mind is watching real world stuff about pandemics and then the fiction I'm consuming is also about pandemics yeah and I, I know I, you can see from the um, like the streaming rankings and things like that that a lot of people are into the are kind of doing what you're doing but me I think I'm more so 
going towards the scripted just to get a break from all the real world stuff. Like, yeah. um, and it's not necessarily like I'm I'm checking out like sunshiny positive stuff because I mean I just finished <laughs> Ozark on Netflix, which that that's my top choice. Ooh, you know, if you got Netflix, yeah. Ozark is just amazing. Like Jason Bateman is the man has had a, an impressive career in just this year alone because The Outsider was one of my favorite series on HBO. Like that was, that season was really good. And he's, um, he's in it early on, but he's also behind the scenes on the series as well. And then, um, you know, like I said, with Ozark, he's doing good with the acting, but he's also a director on that series and a producer on that series as well. So like, yeah, Jason Bateman is just a man right now. In my yeah, opinion. I definitely have a new respect for him. Cause I, he, he, I mean, I knew who he was. He just seemed kind of like, Oh my God, it's Jason Bateman. I was never really a fan of him. I, you know, I see him and stuff here and there, and he was just kind of like a nothing kind of person to me. But yeah, definitely after Ozark, I was like, wow, dude, this Jason Bateman is actually, uh, I, I, I like him. Like he's a really good actor. Um, he's he's I so just, good. I he, like he's didn't good. Think with, he had it in him. Yeah, he's good with comedy and he's really good with drama. Like he he does really well. It's crazy. Like this is the announcer from Dodgeball. You know. Yeah. Like, right. And and yet he's he's just he's <laughs> a super right. talented with dude. With the goofy yeah. ass hair. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, back to <laughs> you, <laughs> Cotton. Yeah, I totally <laughs> forgot. <that. laughs> No, yeah. well, you know, you know what's kind of impressive about comedians, though. I I definitely feel like it's easier or more natural for a comedian to take on a dramatic role than a dramatic actor to try to be funny. It's way harder for a dramatic actor to try to be funny, I think, than a yeah, comedian yeah, to be I able agree. to tap into their real emotions. Yeah, because comedians, a lot of their comedy comes from some serious stuff, you know. So they they got it within them. It's just like. You know, um, they're in touch you know, with what which makes us hurt. That's why they're funny, right? Like, like they're, they're able to bring to light something that bothers all of us and say it in a funny way, right? And and that's why we go, okay, that resonates with me because that's true. Like the old thing where it's funny because it's true, you know? Yeah, one of my favorite um, dramatic performances of all time is Robin Williams in Good Will Hunting. I mean, goodness, he, he's just amazing yeah. in that movie. So, well, how about Robin yeah. Williams in One Hour Photo, right? Totally yeah, or, different, or also even dramatic and totally convincing. And Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam as well. <laughs> like he's he does it. Like he's just really he's really good. Like he's, you know, I say I'm talking about in present tense. It's so weird to talk about him past tense because you know yeah, he still feels alive with his work. Yeah, but um, yeah, definitely talented. But um, yeah, like I said, as far as Netflix is concerned, like that's probably my top suggestion. Ozark. Like if I think anybody that's like a fan of. Like, if you're a fan of Breaking Bad, and I'm, I'm not going to say it's on that level because Breaking Bad is just stellar. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I think if you're a fan of that type of show, then you would be into Ozark because it's like, you know, this sort of everyday type of individual getting caught up into some really deep crime. You know, it's the, the really the criminal world. But like also, deep into too, man, what I like about Ozark is that not all criminals are running around with an eye patch. And a scar on their face, yeah. and a leather jacket. You know what I mean? Like a lot of, I want to say most criminals look like somebody's dad. You know what I mean? Or like just look like some dude, or just look like they're they're they look like an accountant. You know what I mean? They don't all look like the typical movie criminal. It's one of the things I like about Ozark. It just seems realistic in that way. You know? Yeah, yeah, but um. I'm uh, trying to think of like some other stuff like you you want to give um some other oh wait wait before I move on to anything else dude we got to talk about the platform like uh cuz oh well to me like 80% of the way I, I was like really into it but then I started getting the feeling of like like with all these kind of movies like this like it reminded me a lot of like cube and movies like yeah, that yeah where you the premise is awesome, it's excellent, it's exciting the whole way, but you just know that you go, how are they gonna end this? I, I know no matter what no matter how they end this, it's not gonna be satisfying to me. I just know it's not gonna end good. Like 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 in, in, in a satisfactory way where you go, okay, that wrapped up that story. I'm glad I watched that. Yeah. It's to me though, it's it's a movie that falls into a very rare category. It's like where Okay, I don't feel like it has the strongest ending, but I would still suggest it to people just yeah. because it it's there are so many parallels to 
the real world society and how we treat each other and the way it presents some things, it really, I think it really makes you think. I think it does that enough to where that sticks with you. So even without the strongest ending, I mean, if it was a strong ending, it could just be like an instant classic almost, you know, or at least underground type classic. But with without that, still, I, I still would suggest it. You know what I'm saying? I, I think to me, the, the first half was just fascinating. I think to me where it started to drop off a little bit was, well, I guess spoiler warnings. Um. I'm going to talk about it for just one minute, but when one of the characters that you introduced early on isn't in the movie anymore for I don't want to give it away, but there were several characters that I think made the movie very interesting, and then they weren't there anymore towards the end, and I was like, eh. Well, yeah, and they they kind of had to do that to be true to the situation yeah. they were in. Like, there there just had to be some bloodshed, basically, you know, for it to feel Right. I think I know. just found and, and the main you know what though um, annoying. You know they did find ways to bring back in again without giving away too much. They found ways to bring back characters that were technically not there anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think they did that at least because I think they realized the presence was would be missed. You know. But it is one of those movies that the more you think about it, whether intentional or not. The symbolism is insane, right? And then the microcosm of our society. Like, you could even say the flashbacks of a certain character coming back at the end could be the way uh, our grandparents influence, influence us and sticks with us throughout the rest of our life, right? Like, if you mm -hmm. want to break it down, like, what things symbolize. And this movie is one of those ones where you can pretty much break down every single character, every action, even what they eat. Yeah. Um into symbolizing something in society and it's very interesting i think watching it from that point of view and i think especially if you watch it and you start thinking about okay how would i handle this situation it's like you got when you start being there's no easy answers that that's what i love <laughs> about it too there's no easy answers because you know saying it's easy to say that you're this type of person you're this type of way but then when you think about that specific type of situation you, you got to start being true to yourself. You know what I'm saying? So it, well, it's see, I'd like to say that I, what I would do would be like, you know what? I'd probably, if I found myself in that situation, I'd be like, you know what? This is going to really suck for a long time. And I would go, I'm just going to jump now and just end it now because this is, I don't want to live like this. This is awful. I'd rather just die. That's what I say. But if I were actually in that situation, would I really do that? I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then I, I think um, I think survival instincts would kick in. Even even just the question of, and I'm going to stop after this because I really don't want to give away too much in the movie. I really want people that haven't checked it out to check it out. You know, especially if you don't mind the violence because it is it's violent. It's but violent. Um, even just the question of what item would you have, that's something yeah. to really think about. Like, it's yeah, it, it's really interesting in that way. So. Yeah, like I said, not we can agree. I, I, you know, we are agreeing. Not the strongest ending, but I, I still think it's worth a watch, though. But very fascinating, just on a lot of levels. Like you say, even just the item, even just breaking down why each character pick, picked each item is fascinating in itself. And who knows? Even with some time, maybe the ending. Um, because I, I was speaking to a coworker about it, and um, she said she watched it twice, and she said watching it again. And I, I hadn't prompted or anything. I hadn't said anything about the way I felt about the ending. She said, watching it again, the ending clicked for her. So I actually, I'm going to give it a second watch and see if, um, you know, if I feel different about it. Who knows? But, um, yeah, yeah, I, I think. I, I could uh, see, I could see uh, that maybe watching it in a couple of years or something. Um, pain. Yeah, because the, the, the beginning is so crazy and intense that. Yeah, you you kind of almost have a sensory overload by the time you get to the ending. Yeah, that you're watching it fresh probably would change your perspective on it. And I I think also that given the situation and given movies like this, you kind of feel like you know where it's going, and it doesn't exactly go there. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's like it's just I don't know. I almost question like it's it's disappointing, but at the same time, if they if it had turned out the way that you had expected it to. Would that really be fully satisfying? I don't no, know. Even, been even that's a tough call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. So it's it's a tough call type of thing. But I, I like movies that stick with me in that way to where there is something to process afterwards. You know. Okay. So speaking, perfect example of like you know great tangent or, or a great transition. I mean, movies that when I watched them the first time, I was like, eh, I liked it. And that was good. 
moving on. Not going to remember that much. But now watching it again, 10 Cloverfield Lane, I liked it way oh, better yeah. watching I like it that. under I these really conditions. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Then when I first, because at first, when I first watched it, I went to the movie theater. I watched it. Um, not sure what I was expecting. I, I liked it. But, but that was kind of it. It wasn't like, oh, man, I love that. But now that I watched it again a couple of days ago, I'm like, you know what? That's a really, really good movie. I, yeah. I think almost underrated. And I, I, John Goodman is one of my favorite actors. He's so underrated. It's, it's, yeah. it, it almost drives me insane. Like, he's so underrated as an actor. He's great. But, and everybody in yeah. the movie is great. Yeah, even, I like even, everybody. Even the lady that shows up for, like, two seconds to try to get yeah. in the bunker. Even yeah. she's great. And I think the most brilliant thing about that movie, and I, I've, you know, I, I just got to say this. Some people may not have seen it. Is Watch it regardless if you've not seen it, because I think that is a good recommendation. But um, it's one of those movies where the whole time it's like, is it this or is it mm-hmm. that? And when you realize what it is in the end, it's like, oh, well, you didn't even see that it would go that way. And I like that. The ending was great. I was like, yeah. Yeah, because the whole time you're thinking one thing, you're thinking another, then you start you you, you double guess yourself, and then the ending happens, and then you're and like, I want to watch the sequel to this now. I I really do. I want to watch what happens next, and that's the best yeah. thing I think any piece of anything can do is just leave you wanting more. Yeah, te- technically there's th- three movies related to that world, I guess you would say, but. To me, that's the only good one because yeah, well, the third yeah. one is a piece of. I'm not gonna watch it because I've heard so much bad about. I don't want to waste my time. Oh, and the first dude. movie, I like some elements of it, but the the shaky cam was too much. Like I well, saw the it in the theater, one, and I, I had like that I like Lizzie Kaplan. Yeah. <laughs> I like Lizzie Kaplan, and I like I, I liked the concept of it. I'm like, oh wow, this is like Godzilla movie in New York. I like that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely flawed. And I think that movie works best. Like if you have a projector at your home, trying to watch that movie just on a regular TV screen is, it's just not fun. I I think it's, that movie is like a thrill ride. It has to be watched like on a big kind of like projected screen. I think the the shaky cam is too much though, because TJ Miller actually held the camera and it it made me feel sick in the theater. I actually had to close my eyes and put oh, my really? eyes down a couple of times. Yeah, it's, it's see too with much. me like motion sickness has never really affected me. I guess so. Yeah, like if you're sensitive to that, it's physically impossible to watch. Like Blair sports. Blair Witch didn't bother me at all. Like that is is way shakier than Blair Witch. <laughs> like way shakier. Mm. But yeah, Tim Cloverfield Lane definitely um, one of those ones that I appreciated more on a second watch. You want to um. And then we're like uh, we've, we've been at it for a good while what here. Let's three um, hours. <laughs> well, I, I want to give a couple more quick uh, viewing suggestions before we um, wrap things up here. You know, just to try to appeal to different tastes. Um, so I'm just gonna rattle off a couple here, if that's cool. Um, I'm gonna say we talked about it already. I'm gonna still say if you have HBO, watch Watchmen. Like, um, show that show some support because oh, yeah. that was an amazing sure. series. Yeah, and um, I'm not even going to say what it's all about. We addressed that previously, but yeah, I'm still going to big up Watchmen. Missing Link is underrated as well. That's a movie by Leica Studios, the same studio that made Coraline. And um, Missing Link is very funny. Like, it's it's way well, I better than Coraline. I expected. Yeah, and right. Missing Link, like I said, is is way better than I expected. Hugh Jackman is great in it. Um, Zach Galifianakis, I think, actually um, voices... Um, you know, the missing link character, the late link character. So yeah, I think that is um one to check out. It was um it was on Hulu. I don't know if they still have it or not, but if you could find a way to check out Missing Link, then that's really good. And that's, you know, like a family recommendation, I guess I'll say. Um two intense movies on Netflix that I really like. Um one is Caliber, which is basically a thriller. And that's a movie where I almost don't want to say what it's about because it'll give away yeah, too much. At all. I'll just say <laughs> if you if you like that like edge of the seat type of movie, trying to figure out how the main character is going to get out of certain certain situation, like Caliber, once it gets going, is so intense, but it's so good at the same time. And there's some good moral questions with it too. Mm-hmm. And then the Ritual, that's a horror movie. Um, that's also like very intense as well. And yet another one where I can't say too much about it without giving things away, but it's sort of thriller slash horror. It it definitely leans more towards horror though. Um, yeah, it's just, I I like the visuals in it and everything too. It's, it's intense. Yeah. So, um, the breaker upper 
Breaker Upperers. It's tough to say. Um, that's a movie that was produ- produced by Tika Waititi. He didn't actually oh, direct good. it. He didn't direct it, but he did produce it. It's really funny. It's about these um, two women that actually have a business together where they basically they get hired to break couples up. <laughs> like, like um, oh, it's funny. like if, if somebody is having trouble getting out of a relationship, basically they can hire them to step in. And it's really funny. Like it's it's hilarious. You know, it even though it's not directed by Tika YTT, you would think that it was because it's got, like, a it's, stamp on it. Yeah, like it, it's just so so good. Um and then Dolomite is my name. Some people may have seen that already. I, I like that movie because is I know it's I mean, obviously it's about is Dolomite. That the one with Eddie Murphy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, I, I haven't watched it. Like, I need to check that out. What's good about it is I don't care who you are. It's not about so much. I mean, I know it's about Rudy Ray Moore and it's about, you know, his black exploitation movies or whatever. But it's also just to me about being motivated to drive to get things done. Like if you need a kick in the pants, like a type of motor, I feel like it's a motivational movie more than anything really? because he made a lot happen that he probably shouldn't have been able to make happen. I mean, and honestly, Dolomite is, is a terrible movie, but it's like a classic because... I don't know, man. I, I love black exploitation it. movies. I have a whole collection of them, so I'd probably like it. But yeah, like I said, it's, it's just motivational, and it is funny, too, of course. And it's the best Eddie Murphy has been in I don't know how long, you know, other well, than... He, was other he, than he nominated voice for an Oscar, or was that like a whole thing where people were saying he was, like, uh, snubbed? Um, People thought he felt like he was snubbed for this one. Oh, okay, um, yeah, because I, yeah, I heard he was really, really good in it. Yeah, he he is like um I don't know if he was nominated with Golden Globes or anything, but because you know they have more categories, but yeah, yeah he he's really good and I feel like he was tuned in, and he has you know some Eddie Murphy some of his you know classic Eddie Murphy stylings to him, but I <laughs> really feel like he did Rudy Ray more justice at the same time though, like he wasn't right. just trying to be all Eddie Murphy, you know what I'm saying? Um, well, that's good, man. That's some yeah. good recommendations. I mean, change, switch yeah. it up from my uh, end of the world <laughs> fatalistic nonsense. Yeah. I will say too, in this one, you got to be in the right mood for it. This will be the last recommendation I give. Is um, Marriage Story? Uh, um, yeah. It's on Netflix as well. It's heavy, like, but it is also like it has more humor than I expected as well. I- I'll say as far as the like the tearjerker moments, there's mainly just maybe one or two scenes like that. You know, and the overall situation is kind of you know it's heavy, but the act just for the sake of the acting is worth it. Like it's. Adam Driver is amazing in it, especially like there's two or three scenes where he's amazing. But I think Scarlett Johansson is amazing all the way through the movie. So right. if, if I'll just say this, like it depends on, I guess, where you are in life, especially where you are in your relationships, whether or not you should yeah. watch that. If you don't have a <laughs> solid relationship, please don't watch that as a couple, especially while you're stuck in the house. Don't. <laughs> don't so basically, don't watch so that, basically but. it's like uh, uh, watching Requiem for a Dream while you're in the middle of actually being addicted to. Drugs. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's, okay. that's, <laughs> okay. that, that, that's a good parallel. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um. Yeah, those those are my recommendations. There there's plenty of good stuff to watch right now. That that's the one good thing I guess about you know the situation we're currently in is like well, at least you know a lot. We, we 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 you know like we're being asked to just be lazy asses basically, right? Work mm-hmm. from home, be lazy, uh, uh, be courteous, don't cough on each other. It's not like we're stuck, uh, in, in, uh you know, in the like underneath the city in London getting bombed by the Germans, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like. We, we could just chill for a little bit. It's not a big deal. Yeah, and, you know, we, we kind of mentioned some other things along the way here as well. I mean, there's so much people can do right now. And, I mean, there's, you know, there's games, of course. There's reading. I mean, you, you sit still. Like, you know, it's a, it's, it's a perfect time to do that. There like, are so, there's so book, much you can man. do. Like, yeah. like, like, use your, like, like, honestly, man, like, I know I sound like a old man or like a nerd or whatever, but, you know, it's it's fun like watching TV is fun you know collecting pops and watching YouTube is fun too but it's also fun it just makes it up right like yeah. read a book and watch some TV then read a comic book you know it makes up your media's like to me like it, it works your brain out in a different way and um I don't I don't know read, reading a book to me is always more satisfying than watching a movie yeah and exercise too like you know people it's easy to have that excuse too busy too busy too busy 
now you got the time though like i'm even kicking myself in the pants as far as that's concerned like no reason not to no excuse not to uh, you know even if it's um just getting out you know even one thing that's being suggested a lot is you know to get out for a walk of course because you can do that and still have your distance or whatever you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah really no, no I, reason I'm not one, to yeah i'm one that loves exercising i'm, I'm literally sitting on a, a weightlifting bench right now as i'm speaking to you right mm-hmm. um especially when you're stuck at home it's always more relaxing and fun to watch a movie and chill after you're super tired from a workout, dude. There's yeah. like nothing better than just being so tired from a workout, sitting down, watching your TV. No matter what you're watching, is always going to be better than you know if, if you got all this energy. Uh, you know, work, work yourself out a little bit. It's you, you're not nobody ever regrets working out ever. Yeah, exactly. It's it's and especially once you find a groove to where you crave working out that is a good feeling that's that's a good spot to be in you know where you don't where you feel awkward if you don't work out like like, that's a good spot to get into and it really doesn't take that long to get there like just a couple workouts and you're there i feel like the kids are probably expecting us to tell them to brush their teeth (laughs) (laughs) but uh you know for for real though like i mean vitamins brother (laughs) (laughs) yeah this is turning into the um the boom the boomer podcast (laughs) right (laughs) But yo, seriously though, like you, you just gotta do things to um I think protect your mental health. You know, that that's the big thing I would I think I wanna leave off with here is uh j- just find things to do that are productive or, you know, better yourself in some ways. Whatever you gotta do, you know, protect your mental health. That's the main thing, because you can't just lay in bed all day and and you know only watch the news like that's that's no good. Oh yeah, definitely take it's good to watch the news, but definitely take a break from that. You yeah, know, you can't have that in your head all the time. It'll make, it'll make you nuts. And even here and there, maybe take a little breather from social media. I think that's regardless of what's going on in the world. That's some advice I want to give. Just it, if it feels good sometimes to take a little breather from social media because um, we put a lot of unnecessary pressure on ourselves sometimes in dealing with social media, especially you know me and you like being YouTubers and being even though we have you know our small audience still you know we're putting ourselves in the public eye so. You know, sometimes you just got to take a break from that. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's just you can't do the same thing all the time. You know what I mean? You got to take breaks. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, uh, I'm going <laughs> to say goodbye. I'm getting a little tired. It was nice talking to you guys again. And hopefully I get back to making some videos soon for you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to try my best to, uh, you know, stay regular with the um, content as well. I, you know, it's 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 one of my ways that I protect my mental health by, you know, keeping it moving with the things that I do on YouTube. It's, and I just, I like to create, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm actually using this time as well to start writing on a regular basis again as well. You know, my poetry and maybe I'll get into some narrative stuff as well. So, um, but yeah, with the YouTube content, I'm going to try to keep it coming. And, you know, that's one way I try to hopefully keep some people um entertained you know to check that out and hopefully everybody enjoyed checking out this podcast this long overdue <laughs> podcast <laughs> that people have been asking for so i really hope enjoy you know and that people enjoy checking this out yeah all right you guys take it easy all right y'all take care <laughs>